Hey what's up everyone and welcome to Daily Code Buffer. In this video we are going to understand about the A to A protocol that has been launched by Google. A to A means agent to agent protocol. So let's deep dive into this new protocol. Now few days back we talked about the MCP protocol that is the model context protocol which was launched by Anthropic and now Google has came with the another protocol that is the A to A agent to agent protocol. Now let's understand what is this protocol all about, what it does and how it is different from MCP protocol and what are the similarities as well. Okay, if you go through this article that is the announcing agent to agent protocol from Google, you will go and understand the how and what all the things are there about the A to A protocol. Everything is been laid out here. So here what uh, A to A protocol means that how your agents can talk to another agents. That's the main idea behind this A to A protocol. We will understand in deep as well. So here you can see that they have given all the information that we are launching a new open protocol called agent to agent with support and contribution from more than 50 technology partners. So there are a bunch of companies that are supporting this technology as well and working with Google to develop this. Uh, you'll be able to see all those lists as well here and you can see that this is the design principle on which A2A protocol has been designed. So you can read each and everything about the A2A protocol and how it works and everything. Here you can see that what it shows is, it shows that there is an agent 1 that is a client agent, there is agent 2 that is a remote agent and those two agents are able to collaborate between each other. So that means if you have multiple agents available and all those agents will be able to interact. So that's the whole idea behind A to A protocol. Let's understand in detail. So till now what we have understood about the MCP is that MCP provides a standardized way to interact with your third party applications. So let's take an example. Uh, in the previous video also we did the same thing. Suppose this is your suppose Claude. Okay, this is your uh, Claude LLM model. Okay, and now this cloud needs to understand about the today's weather. That means that it needs to interact with the different APIs or functionalities that other systems are giving, which that particular model or client does not have that information. So what it does is it interacts with the MCP server. So you can create the MCP server. And suppose I'm saying that this is a weather MCP server and this will connect to weather API. Okay, so your cloud can go and connect to weather MCP server and your weather MCP server will be exposing the tools available based on the weather API. So what it will do is it will define the tools here. Okay, so different tools will be provided by this weather MCP server and different LL models, different clients will be able to connect. So it's one of the cloud, right? So if I talk about that uh, open API, open AI, suppose let me just talk about uh, Gemini as well. Okay. So open AI can connect to weather MCP server. Gemini can also connect to this weather MCP server. So you can see that all those three models are now able to connect to this weather MCP server and weather MCP server has exposed some tools so that all these models can access those tools and do some operations and all this MCP server is connected by the weather API. So now if you have another, another tool available, another server available, okay, XYZ MCP server, okay, then all this particular LLM models can connect to this, this can connect to this, this can also connect to this and this can also connect to this. So now you can see that everyone connect, can connect to the different MCP servers available. So that was the whole idea about the MCP server. Now how A to A differs from this MCP server? So let me just take this as an MCP server. Okay. Now let's talk about the a to a protocol. So let's take one more example that I am having the HR consultancy company which has the all the different resources for one of the companies. So I'm just an uh, resource sourcing company. Okay. So let me just create a that I am a resource sourcing company. Okay. Now this resource sourcing company has APIs available. Okay. So let me just define. So we have defined few APIs that expose 
resource sourcing for you okay so now if there are any other companies available which they want to use your apis what they can do is they can directly call your apis okay so suppose there is a there is a company suppose xyz okay an xyz company wants to get all the resource sourcing information so that they can take all the candidates and work on it so what they will do is they will connect to your api to get the data makes sense right this is how we work like if we have some of the apis exposed then we will connect to those apis to fetch the data great so now suppose what resource sourcing uh, company did is they use that api and created the mcp server so that we can get the data or we can expose those data over the mcp as well so let me just create that so what i did i created mcp server for resource mcp server great so they created the resource mcp server and now it is connecting to resource mcp server great now xyz company they also have their own mcp server uh, because they also want to use the latest technologies and they have also exposed the data so that all the ai models can access that so they have also one of the xyz mcp server okay they are also connected great so now you can see that xyz company has their own mcp server resource sourcing company has their own mcp server as well okay and now all this and what they are doing is that by this particular resource sourcing and mcp server they have created the agent so that that particular agent if i want to use it i can use it okay so suppose i want to connect to this particular system i can do my own coding and i can do the implementation there are different tools available like init in and the others as well which allows you to create the agents what are agents they are nothing but a code a piece of information a piece of logic that runs on top of your data so whatever the data that you are getting that will work on top of it so let me just define that so suppose this is this is a resource agent okay now they have created the agent and what this company did this company also created the agent so they also created the agent okay this is xyz okay so now you can see that that there is an agent for xyz company there is an agent for resource agent as well now what a2a protocol allows you to do is a2l protocol allows you to connect this agent xyz to this particular resource agent currently you can see that how they are connecting they are connecting by the api exposed by the resourcing company okay so what now they can do is rather than connecting via this api they can connect directly okay and this also they can connect here so this way you can directly connect okay resourcing company so if there is an api so if there was an api that says that uh, list all resources so this was the api and this api was exposed by this api and xyz company was using it so now what this is done is what they have done is they have exposed this list all resources as a part of their tools available okay so this particular resource mcp server will have some tools available so this was exposed by some tools now this tools all attached to an one agent so now if xyz wants to connect to that and xyz rather than calling the api if they want to directly connect those data they can directly connect using this particular agent to agent this is very similar to how we connect the security so if you take the example of how the sso works right single sign on so if you are connecting via login via google login via github login via linkedin right how that works is they have defined a specification based on that specification all the companies can interact so they have so what it is done is it is defined that open id connect okay so open id connect is a standardized protocol defined okay and with this standardized protocol all those different companies connect so so suppose there is a google right linkedin so you can create the account with google and if you want to log in to linkedin via google you can do it and how you are able to do it you are able to do using this open id connect protocol now 
how this open id connect protocol is defined is defined based on the standards that if you are defining this open id connect protocol you need to do bunch of different things you need to define issuer url you need to define how the token should be generated and all bunch of things so that's the standardized way provided and all the companies will have this standardized way exposed so other companies can or other organizations or other apis can reach to it so suppose if i'm creating my application daily code buffer okay and i want to connect or i want to give the functionality to login via google or login via linkedin what i will do is i will have to implement the security open id connect and i need to inform my application that i am connecting to what i am connecting to google and i am connected to linkedin but if i am connecting to google or linkedin for my authentication google should give me some information that how you should connect to have the open id connection okay so how they do this is they do via this slash well known so that is that is slash dot well known slash open id connect so this will be the host so host slash dot well known slash open id connect so this is the url which has been exposed by all the open id connect authentication providers okay so that's how currently it works and that's how we know that how we can connect to them so let me just show you that example as well so if we talk about microsoft right so you can see that so if i want to implement microsoft authentication and if i want to know that what are the things they have, they have provided as an open id connect configuration this is what i can go is their host information and dot well known slash open id configuration so once i use this you can see that all those information are available that what is the token endpoint what is the token endpoint with uh, auth supported methods what is jwks url what are the response mode supports and who is the issuer what is the request uri parameter and all those information so with this information so with this information you are able to connect and do the authentication similarly if i talk about linkedin so for linkedin also you can see it's the same url it's the host information and dot well known open id configuration so here also you will be able to see the similar kind of configuration that that has been exposed via linkedin so with this information you can see that now all the things are standardized here that what needs to be exposed similarly all your applications can connect to it now agent to agent protocol works on the same principle that if whatever the agents are available within your organizations or whatever the agents you have that you want to expose so others can use it you need to do the same configuration what you need to do is you need to expose the same way you need to expose slash host slash dot well known slash agent dot json so this is the file that you need to expose which will have all the information about your agent discovery okay so that everyone can know that you have the agent available and your agent will have this much functionalities available okay these are the tools available so others if they want to use it they can use it similar to how they use in open id connect for the security similar thing your a to a can also use the same format same structure because it is already available we can reutilize it okay so there is a structure available so you can see that they have provided the structure json format as well like how you want to do is that your your schema information title description and all those things should be defined this way this is the entire json schema the same schema you have to implement because if you are exposing agent this is called an agent card right agent card defines what are the agents available with you and what are the functionalities they provide so if you are talking about this thing right so if you are talking about this entire thing this is your agent so this will be exposed as dot well known slash agent dot json it will be exposed here and this will be called as your agent card so this is one of the agent card this is also one of the agent card and those agent cards can talk to each other okay so if there are multiple agents available so so all these agents have exposed themselves that these are my agents capable these are all my agents available within my org and these are the capabilities and any of the org they want to implement it they can directly do it so if i talk about the same thing right i have a resource sourcing company and this resource sourcing company exposed an api to list all the resources available all the senior software engineers all the freshers and all those resources available now if the company wants to get all the data rather than getting the data via api they can connect via a to a protocol because 
they have also created the agent that this agent can talk to each other because you can see that the human intervention is been removed directly your agents whatever you cre created you can directly interact with them your agents can interact with the other agents so if your company also has the agent that fetches all the data for the different positions open within your company then your agent can talk to this particular agent and ask do you have some of the resources i am looking for this resources and based on that information they can collect all those resources filter it out and they can perform some operations so that's a similar kind of demo also given by google regarding the same thing that if you have multiple agents available those multiple agents can talk to each other if we talk about some other use cases right suppose if i'm talking about uh, aggregators right suppose i'm talking about uh, sky scanner so what sky scanner does is sky scanner aggregates all the information from the different uh providers right travel agent providers so if i have yatra make my trip all those things right all those things i have exposed in api so that we can fetch all the data from their system like what are the flights available what are the prices and everything instead of providing those apis they have exposed an agent so agent can share all those information to you and as a aggregator rather than i collecting and i am calling all those api i have also an agent created and that agent can talk to all those agents available and fetch all the data rather than system calling all those apis the agents can themselves call those apis and collect the data that's the beauty about the a2a protocol and you can see that it is a complementary to the mcp protocol and it is not a replacement here right if you see google's documentation as well they have provided that it will loves mcp so both the protocol will be complementing each other so that all the different agents can be created and agents can talk to each other the whole idea is about agent discovery and agent talking to each other this is very similar to open id connect that we discussed so i am very excited about how this will play out in the future and how the different companies will adapt to it i am super excited to build something on top of it by creating some of the mcp servers and creating as an agent and how different agents can interact with each other i will try to create some demo around this as well there are a couple of demos available via google as well to understand how this works i will add the links for each and everything in the description below for you to check out the blog post the github uh, link for the a2a protocol and each and everything so you can check those out this is still in the very early phase and we will see a lot of development within this uh, space so if you are interested in such videos then subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss such videos as well so that's been it i wanted to share about the a2a protocol this is a very high level understanding about the a2a protocol we will go much deeper and implement the a2a protocol as well within the future videos as well so stay tuned for that as well i will see you in the next video till then happy coding bye bye